If you're just starting to research automated storage and retrieval solutions, you might be struggling to determine the differences between a vertical lift module and a vertical carousel module. They have similar names, but they're different technologies. Let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between how they work, their various footprints and heights, as well as the product sizes that they store. Let's dig in. A vertical lift module consists of two columns of trays with an inserter extractor that's positioned in the center. The inserter extractor travels up and down, locating and retrieving stored items as needed. Similar to an elevator, you can have a door positioned on the front or the rear of the unit. And picking from a vertical lift module can either be done manually or with an automated robotic integration. Now, a vertical carousel module is built with a series of carriers attached in fixed locations to a chain drive. Movement is powered by a motor that sends the carriers in a vertical loop in either forward or reverse directions, similar to a Ferris wheel. Both technologies deliver stored items to an ergonomic access point. Again, a vertical lift module operates similar to an elevator, whereas a vertical carousel module is similar to a Ferris wheel. So now that we know a little bit more about each product, let's talk numbers. Standard vertical lift modules range from 5 to 15 feet wide and are 7 to 10 feet deep. Trays storing inventory range from 4 to 13 feet wide and are 2 to 3 feet deep with a maximum product height of just over 28 inches. Ultimately, using a VLM will maximize your storage density, saving you up to 85% of your floor space compared to traditional rack and shelving. These vertical storage systems are built to take advantage of the vertical height in your facility. VLMs start at 8 feet tall and can go up to 98 feet, but the average height of a VLM is generally 35 to 45 foot tall. The machine height should be determined by your available ceiling height and your storage and throughput needs. On the other hand, vertical carousel modules range from 6 to 13 feet wide and 4 to just over 5 feet deep. Designed for smaller product sizes, carriers that store inventory measure 4 to 12 feet wide and are 16 to 24 inches deep, with a maximum product height of 18 and a half inches. Vertical carousel modules start a bit shorter at 7 feet tall and can reach up to 32 feet tall. When it comes to machine height, throughput is a factor. You don't want the machine to be too tall because you risk negatively impacting your picking speed. So while these units can be similar in size, they are designed to focus on different applications. Vertical carousel modules are more suited for routine, repetitive, and standardized operations, where vertical lift modules are more suited for dynamic, changing, and flexible operations. When choosing the right automated storage and retrieval solution for your operations, product size, product mix, and capacity are going to be the deciding factors. So let's take a look at our most popular storage systems today, the vertical lift module and the vertical carousel module. And let's dig into the types of inventory they manage, how they store their inventory, and their overall load capacity. So the way each of these products stores inventory is a little bit different. The VLM stores products on trays, and these trays can store anything from small parts to large bulky items. Standard tray sizes are going to range from 4 to 13 feet wide and be about 2 to 3 feet deep. You're going to have a maximum product height of just over 28 inches. So the trays can be further subdivided if you have smaller parts. The VLMs um, are unique because they can easily manage a changing product mix. So the way they do this is the unit uses a height sensor located at the back of the access opening to measure the height of the items that are on the tray with each put away. So the integrated software then crunches those numbers and directs the VLM to store the tray in the best possible location to maximize storage density within the unit. So every time a tray is put away, the height is scanned. So if the product height changes, the VLM can just store the tray in another location. So it's easy for the VLM to adapt to operations that use frequently changing product mixes. The vertical carousel modules, on the other hand, are best for similarly sized products. The carriers in the machine are evenly spaced into fixed positions, so it's important to know the height of your stored items prior to installation so that you can ensure the space is maximized in the unit. It is possible to manually adjust the shelf spacing after installation, however the machine needs to be unloaded to do so. So if your product mix does not change often, the VCM is a great option. It's designed for smaller product sizes, so the VCM carriers range from 4 to 12 feet wide and 16 to 24 inches deep with a maximum product height of 18 and a half inches. So for smaller parts, the carriers, again, can be subdivided vertically or horizontally to accommodate your requirements. After considering product mix and physical inventory size, it's critical to look at load capacity to ensure that your inventory weight can be accommodated in the unit that you select. 
For heavy duty applications, the VLMs can handle weight up to 2,200 pounds per tray, whereas the VCM maxes out at just over 1,400 pounds per carrier. So for companies with larger, heavier items, the VLM might be the better way to go. The VLMs can also be easily outfitted with lift assist equipment if you require it. So why these technologies may appear similar in name, the product size, product mix, and load capacity will really be the deciding factor in which makes more sense for your operations. When looking at a vertical lift module or a vertical carousel module, picking speed matters. The speed and throughput these systems can bring to your operations is how you gain efficiency. So let's go ahead and take a look at the picking speeds between these two technologies. First, let me start by saying that when compared to rack and shelving, you're going to see faster throughput no matter which system you implement. That's because automated storage and retrieval systems operate on the goods to person principle. Instead of walking to a pick location, items are brought directly to an operator. The operator can then pick these items from an ergonomically positioned access point, and while picking occurs, the next pick is being queued to reduce overall dwell time. Now, there are some trade-offs between these two systems. A vertical lift module can store a lot of inventory and deliver trays quickly. However, there's still some search time associated as the operator needs to locate the item in the presented tray. For maximum pick speed, you'll want to slot your inventory so that your high frequency picks are located closest to the access opening. That way, the inserter extractor doesn't have to travel far to retrieve them. You could also consider integrating pick to light technology, which will pinpoint the exact location of the item to be picked. With these strategies in place, and depending on your application, the vertical lift module can achieve pick rates of up to 350 items per hour. Slotting inventory is equally important in a vertical carousel module. The carriers with the highest frequency picks should be stored adjacent or a maximum of one to two carriers apart so that the carousel only has to travel a short distance in between picks. Otherwise, you'll find some dwell time as you wait for a carrier to be delivered to the access window. Depending on your machine configuration, your application, and your picking strategy or other factors, a vertical carousel module can usually provide about 400 picks per hour which is a bit more than the vertical lift module. The key to achieving maximum throughput from either of these technologies is ultimately based on your application, slotting your inventory, and integrating pick to light technology.